I wouldn't let anything go. If I had a bone, I would pick it until there was no more meat left on that bone. So if someone had something to say to me, I was in their face. They did not stand a chance, not because I was a good fighter, kind of like the Celts. The Celts weren't good fighters. They just fought naked. And everybody was like, holy shit, if they don't need any armor, they must be really good. Let's run for the hills. But whenever you use, whenever you use that tactic, you're eventually going to find someone that calls your bluff. The Romans came through, and the Celts came at them naked over the hill. Ah! And the Romans were like, tricks on you, we like that shit. <laughs> they took them. And they probably had lots of orgies instead of actually fighting. Well, I had that bluff called one day when I was stopped at a red light. And the red light was taking forever. Oh my God, forever. Oh, just turned green. Oh, how'd that get over there? And just as soon as you look into your floorboard, the second you look into your floorboard, the light turns green. And the person behind you has about 0.23 parts of a second to be able to honk their horn at you. Right? I mean, that's their choice. So the guy laid into his horn. Now I had three choices. A, I could just roll, let it roll off my back and not worry about it, go on about my day. B, I could shoot him a bird and let him know, hey, bitch, hey, and roll on. Or third, I could have just been like, my bad, and rolled on. So those two would have probably been the smart options. But that second option, <laughs> that was my option that I went with. I flicked him off, and I took off. Well, I noticed that he followed me. All right, well, it could have been a coincidence. So I took myself on to Walmart, and I was going to go shopping. And I pulled into the, I pulled into the uh, parking spot, and I was like, all right, I got to get cheese and eggs, and I need to get, I'm going through, my, going through my shopping list. I get out, I close the door. A little bitty Miata, older style, red, hanging low to the ground, pulled up. And he rolled down the window, and he was like, dude, people get shot for less. I looked at this tiny man in that little bitty red Miata lying low to the ground, and I said, I got three options with this. I could say, you know, you're absolutely right. And maybe he would just let me go and not run me over. Option two, I could say, man, I don't care what you have to say. Get out of there and I'll kick your hobbit ass. <laughs> or three, I could have offered him a blowjob and we both would have been happy. <laughs> I went with option two. Man, I will kick your hobbit ass. He <laughs> was like, excuse me? What'd you just say? I could have just been like, I didn't say anything and walked off, but no. I said, man, I'll kick your hobbit ass, and apparently you're deaf, too. He opened the door to that low-hanging red Miata, and he stepped out. Well, I say stepped out, but really he climbed out like a giant alien. And I looked back at the car behind him, and I hadn't even noticed him, but I looked back at it, and I remember noticing so many times that it was such a low-hanging Miata, and it wasn't a low-hanging Miata anymore. And then I took notice of the guy looking down at me. The guy had to be every bit of six foot six. 
400 pounds, like a brick wall. Oh, God, here we go. I'm going to die. He gave me one more chance. He walked over to me, and he looked down at me, and he put his hands up like he was He-Man. Motherfucker, you're He-Man? No. But he looked down at me, and he was like, What'd you say to me? I had three options. I still had that blowjob on the table. I could still whip that one out. I'm good at those. Maybe if I tell him I'll suck his dick, this will all be over with. Or, or I could put the key in my hand like this, grab his shirt like this, and get in his face, which wouldn't take much because he was already right there in my face. And I could shake his collar and say, I'm going to kick your hobbit ass and come around. Because I was stupid and young and thinking, that'll work. Trust me, had I, had I hit him, it would have been like a pigeon hitting a 747. <laughs> or... I could have just said, sir, I'm so sorry. Let me take my pride and roll it up and put it in my butt crack where it's leaking poop right now. <laughs> and maybe he would forgive me and let me stumble into Walmart with shitty pants to buy what I needed to buy. And I would survive. So I went with option two. I grabbed his collar and I prepared my last words. And I said, man, I will kick your hobbit ass! And the guy puts his hand on my face. And I was like, this is it, I'm going out. And he pushed me back. And it was like one of those, it was like one of those cartoons. He had his hand on my face and I was just for a good 30 seconds. <laughs> and he was like, I don't have time to deal with your crazy ass. Because I'm not going to jail. And I was like, you know, that's a good idea. You just, you just go on. You get back in your Miata. And he did. And then it became a nice, red, low-hanging Miata again. And he drove off complaining about crazy ass white boys. <laughs> that was the day my last words were almost, I'll kick your hobbit ass. 